in your words, what uh, what does it take to be in a band? What does it take? You definitely need to have something missing. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what the best thing to be missing is. <laughs> See, most of your rock bands and that have got a bit of ego, you know. But in a, like a local band, it's not, it's not appreciated, you know. You know, you're from Morpeth, not Miami. If you want to tell your own story in your songs, of course, your, your musical influences will creep in there, and your environment where you've been brought up, whether it's uh, industrial or rural. You need to be reasonably proficient with your instrument, of course, but to keep a band together, you need a reasonable sense of timing and the ability to get on with people. Realisation will creep in that you need the fun element to counteract the logistics of it. When you're lugging PA gear and bass amps and drums and that about, and there's all that palaver getting to the gig, you do the gig, that's the fun bit, and then you've got to load out all the gear again. There's a thrill there, everybody's nervous. But you forget that nervousness generally when you're getting through the first couple of bars and you just relax into it. Well, you try and relax into it. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the magic happens. Psych! <laughs> Um, who would do this? Uh, Alicia. Uh, this is like Gold. 20 yards. Yeah, where, where at? Uh, Brick Club, it's called. It's just it's next, it's next to a Gordon Card. Get on the top. Oh, yeah. But, uh, shout them out. Uh, well, it's the one that owns it who does the anarchy stuff. She was in there, but I didn't uh, go to her. Chris, where they being an apprentice is a bit cheaper. I'm on camera. <laughs> Saturday. Oh, aye. <laughs> yeah. Why are we running around the common naked? Chester. <laughs> well, it was, it was hot. Yeah. Jake just got naked and then I was like, we have to finish. I was like, why did you just go to the common? But Martin, we just were just in there. Yeah. 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 We're just in there. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. 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 Presumably, you're. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't <laughs> put that on. <laughs> Prior to this, but like years ago. Like yeah, I've been like, in a lot of different bands together. 
it's so, just going back from being at school, really, wasn't it? Yeah, so Dan, Dan the drummer, and me and Alex the singer, uh, we were in a, a band in school. Yes, you Jake and Ryan were, were in a kind of quite me heavy metal. Yeah, we're very heavy. Sure. <laughs> so, what about music in families then? Do any of you have relatives that Tom, are musically yeah, talented? Yeah, my dad had a. He was in like Kerrang! magazine in the 80s. Oh, wow. But um, that was a band called Split Crow. So that was kind of like southern boogie from all the yeah from all <laughs> yeah. the south. It sounds like they should be from like Texas or somewhere like that, <laughs> the deep south. We've done like three or four rounds of the uh, the tavern battle of the bands this year. We've made it through the final and we're up against a, a really great indie band called the Copper Sets from from Manchester. Um, so we need we need people not just to support Clipper but to support the Northeast in uh, in this Northeast Battle of the Bands. Mm -hmm. We're doing a, a summer gig, a summer scorcher with right. AH at the end, much mm -hmm. like Clipper. Of course. Um, yeah. and that's at the Bridge Hotel in, in Newcastle. <laughs> Born in Ashton, if I <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> what about if you could perform anywhere, where would it be? Oh, oh that's mm. nice. Um, Antarctica. <laughs> Why no. not? My answer would be uh, Lindisfarne Festival 2019. It's a very short term goal, but that would be my uh, my answer for this year, which we will be performing at if we win the Battle of the Bands. Right, well, it's recording, so <laughs> just pass it down the bus. I think they're gonna win. I'm so proud. <laughs> this is the place to be. If you're not here, you're a oh, oh, oh. I found a of a Buddha spring in my step. My body's magazine on cover face was all they had left. She danced beneath the tables in the red room dawn. I see only one to ask her put her clothes back on. And I said,
It's been a good night. For the winner is Clifford. Behind the scenes. <laughs> The world is spinning too fast. I'm buying Nike shoes Woo. to keep myself in tether to the days I tried to lose. I hear my mama said to slow down. You must go on shoes. Step dancing to the music of the clipper in a funky mood. <laughs> Morpeth is a small town. You never seem to be very far away from the river in Morpeth. And it has a definite individual character. So I think what you're asking me is, yeah. do you need to kind of seem like a really cool out there person to make it on a stage in a rock band? Yes. Because there's a certain image you're trying to portray. Yes. And there's a bunch of country chaps from Morpeth. Can they pull that off? Spot. Is that what you're thinking? Spot. Well, in my opinion, what makes you really, really cool is being a good musician. So I think I've always, I've always loved violins because um, I was brought up in a family of Irish fiddle players. We were just used to making music together, really, particularly my dad and my granddad. There would just be lots of fiddle playing and foot tapping in the kitchen. And as soon as I was old enough and able to join in, I would just join in. Well, I think from the age of about 11, I decided that I wanted to be a violinist. So practiced lots and lots past my grade eight, um, learned to play the piano, auditioned at music college, and thankfully ended up at the Royal Scottish Academy of Music to do my music performance degree, and um, continued from then, really. I think Dan was about seven when I started to teach him to play the violin, but he actually made a really good sound, and he was a promising little violinist. And then I can remember we went out for a walk along Tynemouth Pier and I said to him, I actually think you should give up playing the violin. You never ever get that instrument out of its case unless, unless I ask you to do so. So I don't think it's the right instrument for you. But you will know when the right instrument comes along. And his eyes kind of lit up and he said to me, can I play the drums? And my heart sank and I thought, oh no, drums in the house. But he also um, played guitar and was pretty good at it, actually, and has collected lots of guitars over the years and also taught himself to play the bass. So he's a bit of an all-rounder, really. I think I had quite a narrow um, music education from about the age of 18 onwards, so I think Dan's introduced me to lots of styles of music I might have missed along the way, and I love going to his gigs, so that's something completely different to my classical concerts. This is a strange thing about Morpeth. It is a very secret sort of town. You always get the feeling that there's a life going on below the surface. I think your music should speak for itself. And what I love about Clipper is you kind of don't have a set image. You're all such individuals. And when you're on stage, some of you kind of sometimes look like you might be wearing your pajamas and others might have a nice Hawaiian shirt on or whatever. And everybody just comes to the party as they are. And then you come together and what gels you completely isn't what you wear, isn't you trying to be uniform in your styles. It's when you come together and you have that bond of creating your music together. Where about you going, boys? We got it in the field, in the field. <laughs> Where about you going, boys? Into the fields. Where are you? See you later. <laughs>
<laughs> what about me? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty funny in that hat, like. Where is he? <laughs> Just there. Yeah. I followed your lead and also got some wipes. What? I followed your lead and also got some wipes. Need them for your bollocks. Alright. Need clean bollocks at a festival. I'm not going to have the world's quickest shower. I'll be like two snowy and not. Two minutes, literally two minutes. That's not quick. Into the field we go. Sly bud, but we're a band. Yeah. Cheers. We're a band. One of them band. Oi oi! Oi oi! We should have left by now. <laughs> we should have been, we need to be there in four minutes. <laughs> oh, rock and roll's dead. Experience, the experience is there. We'll be on that tonight. That ride. Jake just fit, man. This is too bad. The bass definitely getting himself a bag of crisps or something. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out! Watch out! Are we good? Are we right, good? what's your story, mate? So my story is at Kirkus Fest. Was it last year? Was it, was it Adam, was it last year? No, it was last year. It was last year. Two years ago. So I opened, I opened up the cupboard in my house. And it looked it was the same colour blue as like Dan's airbed there, so I thought, oh, it must be an airbed. Yeah, Dan, it's all your fault. And then I got a Kirkus vest, took it out, unrolled it, and I was like, what the hell, this is yellow. And then I was just like, I just looked and I was like, this is a blooming thing. Like, what the hell's good? So yeah, these, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not made for campus. Oh, man. Let's go make some trash. So everyone knows, no shop, extra wear shop is. Right, let's do it. Shortly we'll hunt this sensational cover. Recent words of Battle of the Bands at the Tavern. Ooh. Didn't expect that. Who's volunteer? Are you always getting nervous? And that's part of it, really. And then when you walk onto the stage, once you've said the first words, you relax more, then you feel all right, and you like that little buzz. And then once you go off, you're dying to come back on again. I grew up in Blythe, Northumberland, which is on the northeast coast. It's a seaside town. I first took an interest in wanting to perform on the stage as a little girl, just doing concerts for aunties and uncles and in the sitting room. And when I got older, um, I would go on to school plays and what they call the Sunday school anniversaries where you had to learn the little piece to say. And I started getting the, the best parts and the leading roles. When I was about 17, I decided to join the Dramatic Society in Blythe called Blythe Players, and I was part of that for many years, really. It was great, just the excitement backstage and the, just the walking out onto the stage. I went back and forwards after having children, um, and I don't know why I stopped, really. It was just, I think I got to a certain age where I didn't think it was quite for me anymore. When I go to watch Clip in now, it's a great feeling when I watch Alex come out on this stage because it's, I don't know, it's like, I know how he feels because I used to love that when you just walked out. I mean, I know I wasn't a singer, I couldn't sing, but it's a nice feeling watching people watch you and take in what you're doing and then them clapping at the end because they're clapping for you. What is this nobody there? 
Well, there's always somebody there. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage. Come on! Festival. Whoa. His two-man tent when he uh, took it out of the case was actually was actually a windbreaker. I suppose I've been watching bands all my life, really. I think my first band I went to see was Status Quo at the City Hall in Newcastle, 1978. I couldn't believe how loud it was, really. I was probably partially deaf for a couple of days. There have been many waves of newcomers in Northumberland's long history, and today its cultural traditions continue in the villages and smaller towns and flower in the capital, Newcastle. I was born in Newcastle as, as near as you can get. I was brought up in, in Heaton to start with. Newcastle's the centre. Live theatre, art galleries, concert halls are open all the year round. Appropriately, perhaps, Killingworth, once a little colliery village, was where George Stevenson built his first railway and his first steam engines. We moved to Killingworth when I was about 17, still at 
mum and dad's. Firstly, going out to Newcastle, it was a bit of a scary place, to be honest. It was a lot of um, violence going on. There was more friendlier people, I think, in the rock music scene than there was in, in, in see, if you went down the big market. We were really spoilt in the late 70s with bands. You had likes of Thin Lizzy and White Snake and Rainbow and all of these bands who were like at the forefront of music, really. I used to like playing guitar myself and you used to try and play the songs in them days. But once you've got a guitar in your hand, you think you can play anything and do anything. I like the rock and roll lifestyle, I still do, but um, I didn't quite uh, put the dedication into playing the guitar as well. I used to be very good at learning the beginning of songs. Um, and then I got bored with the rest of them, you know. We practiced a couple of times and then after that we just, you know, more time down the pub, you know, you couldn't be asked to do all the practice and getting everybody in one place at one time is difficult. I think me going to see Jake playing in a band and to have the guts to get up there and do it and doing as well as he has and, and it's just sort of, I'm just so proud of him. It's, it's really good to see him doing so well. Yes, I suppose he's, he's doing something I would have probably liked to have done, yeah, definitely, but uh, as I say, different sort of times and I think uh, he has got a lot more dedication to sticking to the music and, and, and coming out the other end with, with a song and a performance and he's got a good group of friends with him in the band who, who are equally sort of dedicated, which is, which is good. Um, I only hope that the, uh, the dedication pays off. Two again. Yeah? Yeah, that's quite cool. Okay. We'll move the tables up. Mike and then just... We'll, <laughs> 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 we'll push all the tables close together so I'm more going. Like Great like the day of Royal Runway is probably like, like Ron Burgundy playing the jazz flute. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> I get, it's, it's missing the bottom button so I kind of need a t-shirt to go underneath it. I might, get, I might buy one of Plastic Glasses t-shirts. I have to go out there. I'm still quite interested. I'm taking that. Right. That's pretty garish. Like, well, they've got to be garish now. Well, Everybody, everybody's wearing the trendy ones, man. Well, let me go, though. So I was thinking, actually, there's already a line up there. If there's a ladder we can use, I was thinking we could hang some, some of the other shirts mm -hmm. from up there. Well, like, there is like, like a washing line, but I have bought a washing line this morning. I've been packed to, to, to do it if we wanted. I've also bought some bunting, which I'm not too sure about. Hopefully. It stays like this looking fine. Scorching in there, Mike. There's no mistake about it. This is my favourite shirt. It's just too hot. It's like polyester. Yeah, I suppose they probably each represent different kind of time periods. Like this, this one was never actually bought for gigging. This one was actually just a Hawaiian shirt I bought and wore when me and uh, Adam went to Berlin. The rest of them I kind of just started buying when we started gigging as a kind of homage to kind of old school pub. Northumbrian bands that Barry who told me about that used to always wear deliberately ugly shirts to play. Right. I think we're making some progress. I'm going to need you to get a chair or a stool, something that will hold you and just hold them up. Uh, 
Perfect. <laughs> that's good, that's but I think that's good as it is. I think we'll just leave that on the shelf. Once you spread them out, they'll uh yeah. short them all the way. I can just Mess them up, don't they? Should we put the bun down? <laughs> you need bun. Oh yeah, you can just hand it over, can you? Like that? Yeah, yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. How much, how much do I need to get? You know, give it some welly so they'll all come down. <laughs> if we've got the fire on it, we'll uh... It'll <laughs> send them in disarray. Yeah. Are they here? Oh. <laughs> Tom can't see me, he can see you. That is America's ass. What's he do? Why are they just sitting in the car? So are you going by the ball? Probably not. Well, sorry to Brian. If, well, I, I presume Brian was mostly going back because he wanted to drink. Drink of what? Oh, oh cause to drop his car. Yeah, yeah. I'll probably be getting the bus on the train back later. So sorry, what you are going by the ball? Later tonight. Right. After the gig. Oh, after the gig. Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 we'll have to clear up, man. We'll have to pack everything up. Yeah. They're not and being timing. Get, get the quarter past eleven bus. Nope. Nope. It'll take a good while to pack up. <laughs> nope. It'll take a good hour, I, I imagine. Wait, we'll how am I going to get back home? home? Well, with Ronnie, presumably. Uh, Why, he doesn't have a big van? Is he not bringing the van through? He's only got two oh, seats. Oh, yeah, it's a white one now. Um, what with Jamie? He might. See, problems. Have you lost your car, right? Come on. Keep your shit out of the car. It's gonna be scorching. It's gonna be scorching. The sun is coming out a bit as well. Nice view of all the trains and the flamingos. Heaviest base yeah, amp in existence. Oh, it's an old one. It's bars as old scratcher. It is. It's a tank. Yeah. 
Oh, shit. And there's palm trees. Um. Oh, yeah. As soon as anything comes through that speaker, it's going to be on. <laughs> First of the day. I'm a good citizen, you know. Citizen. Yeah. Bye bye. I would just do the maybe maybe we could just do a two like a two song on call, just have like going off and then just Young and house fire. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. No covers. No. Who haven't practiced it? Don't know any mate. How do you explain it? Wait, we could easily stick in like um the doors one or whatever. Or oh, hair. Yeah, so hair is just longer. Yeah. We'll just do youngins. Hair hair house fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. Three song uncle. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so take as long as you want to get the perfect kicks out. That's it, that's it. <laughs>
sniff at this. <laughs> I'm really full, mate. Mixed grill. Manager's special. A lot grows into putting on a gig. If you want to do it well, I've learned. Hopefully this is doing it well. We're still making mistakes. <laughs> uh, I think I will by the end. I need to enjoy it and actually think about singing some songs. Is this the end of the band, Tom? As you know it, I... Uh... CDs out of the boot. Right, good evening, everyone. We're doing some limiting with the first band of the evening.
Jake's going to make some proper rock noises with a guitar here. Like, are you ready for it? It's recording. Tom, it's recording. Yeah, I know. It's on you. I know. Hello. I'd like to dedicate this next one to my good friend Tom Winlow on the bass. I was just pointing at everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, Tom, move. Oh, 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 Where's Jack Dickinson at these days? Where's he? This one's for Jack Dickinson as well, wherever he might be. Sorry, I'm making a really in niche Morbeth jokes. This one's for Tom on the bass. This one's called Youngins.
city that's become the mecca for people in the northeast who like to consider themselves to be with it. During the course of the morning there have been a few hundred people wandering around here and some of them, well they look like throwbacks to prehistoric days virtually. There's every kind of dress, every kind of hairstyle, every kind of shoes. The organizers of this are pressing very hard their point of view that this is a love-in which is nothing to do with drugs. They're in fact they say very much against drugs and they say the young people here are which is just as well, considering that half the Newcastle City Police drug squad are here. Why not give it a put down on the drums and some on the bass while you're at it? Let's bring it back up. Well, Johnny used to be a different guy before the day he met you. Thank you. 
Jeez, I swept. If, if, you, if you get a sorry, thing, sorry. It's all right. And I'm not wearing that. I don't want to break your symbols. See? Can you just stand it up somehow? What? Play now, I hear What's this one? Some special terms. I thought that was in the house. No, I went to the one together. Watch out when he did a wasp flying around this way. Well, it's just a wasp. <laughs> Gucci will get your arm in his car. Do you think? Is your dad coming? Is your dad driving? He must be. Oh yeah, I'll do one. He is. So is he coming down to yours, buddy? Yeah, he's coming for a cup of tea, you know. Yeah, right. That should be all right. It's just like push against the door. Ryan first took an interest in guitars when he was about four or five years old. He came up to us and asked us if he could have an air guitar. And of course, when it'd been near Christmas and me and Vanessa being generous types, we told him he could have two. <laughs> I like to sit and play the guitar for my own personal satisfaction. I, you know, I'm, I couldn't like take it up like Ryan has and perform in front of people. I'm too nervous a person to do that sort of thing. Well, I've supported the Clipper by basically doing a lot of transport for them, by helping them set up, helping them take gear down. I don't try to get involved in the band's politics. That's not down to the likes of me to sort out. Rock and roll needs help. Rock music needs help. All music needs help at the present time. But I give me time up because I like it. I like to watch the band playing. I really enjoy it. I really enjoy the atmosphere that they generate. I'm retired now and it's given us a new lease of life. I've helped them out because I like them. I like the lads personally. And I like going to the gigs that I do. I enjoy meeting people. I enjoy seeing new faces and new places. Is it on? Is it on? Um, right. Let's shout out famous. We're in Ashton. Famous things to come from Ashton. 
Charlton Brothers. <laughs> Sausages. Jackie Milburn. Milburn. Uh, Harmson Brothers. Colin A. Alex A. <laughs> Me, I was born in Ashton. I was born in Ashton and I was made in the Royal Navy. <laughs> you can write a lot of songs from reading newspapers. You can write a lot of songs from reading history books. Local history. There's lots of ways to get inspiration to write songs. Name artists who have played at uh, Bubbles or the cellar, the cellar. Dave Grohl. No. Dave Grohl. Peter Green. Peter Green. Paddy, Paddy Billy Connolly was that one? Connolly, Connolly used to be a regular. Jimmy Page. What? Hi. Uh, Jeff Beck. They've got loads of photos of them in Bubbles as well. Matt Dunlop. Matt Dunlop. That's right, eh? Sting. 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 Coochie. I don't know if one of these have played them. Famous people have come from Ashton. Dan. Jamie Prang. Whitey. Huh? Who else? Who else? Who Whitey Jamie. I don't know. I thought you said Whitey. Whitey. You just called Whitey. No, I didn't know he was from Ashton. Same player. Look at these lads. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, he stood outside here, though. Oh, that's cool. Well, here, let's smash the gaff up and leave. One, two, 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 one, two, two. One, two. Man, I can't see you. I still can't see you. What do you want? I kind of see you, man. What are you, what are you asking? Are we starting? Yes. yes. You want me to start now? Yes. Right. Okay. <laughs>
broken heart They left the pictures on and how for you to see it that held you still on Go on a little less lost inside of a Tell Sella what's that way. I'll do it. How many nights did I think about you love me? Are you hiding on a coastline far away? I was caught between the right and the wall that wrong would bring me. I was soaring by the sun with wings that fray While the wings that fray Well, I thought it was quite well, smoky. The set was excellent. Well, well, it was only sensational. <laughs> <laughs> what can you say about Clipper? Going home. <laughs> yeah, I stopped and I looked around. It's a funny thing as yes, returning to a place. Well, my soul first bled out sound I could smell all the better times As the heat that took me by the hand of my fear Felt the sound by familiar ground Walk a cold dark ground Who else have you seen here? I've seen a lot of bands here I'm trying to think <laughs> top of my head but I remember White Snake was supposed to play there once Apparently I was, I missed that one. No, that's some history. <laughs> I didn't say that. Is there still stuff in there to bring out? I'll dig it, go away. It's carry good, like. Uh, I couldn't see f thing. Like. And I was sweating my ass off. And, uh,. I think I pretty much summed it up there, like... Now I found my way There were times I spent alone and crying In a place where I thought I spent my better days So sometimes when I'm broken down My heart is sick of over trying And I ache for that coastline far away
what does the band mean to you guys? Yeah, it's quite special to see like such a like a close group of friends actually come together and do something like proper like this. It's just good to see. I enjoy seeing them get better and better. They're very kind of unique in their own ways when they get together. It's a good sound. The way they dress, the, the five of them look like they just made each other a bus stop or something. So how long you know in Clipper for? Since it started. Aye. Probably about four years, I would say. How long have you been supporting them? Four years. How would you describe them live? Mint. <laughs> Good at dance to, as you have seen from me. What's your favourite song? Uh, Extravaganza, because that's my uh, album in the video. <laughs> Can you sing it for us? Oh no. Nice. Everything's been good with uh I've had some very successful gigs and that, I think. I think it's been a very worthwhile summer. What was the highlight? Yeah. 
Very, yeah. very nice. It's very nice playing to a big crowd of people. A lot of happy faces. We had, we had, the, we had the regulars at the front. Are you pleased? Yeah. I mean, I didn't think I could even play the drums when I woke up this morning. <laughs> oh, it's class, you know. Usually I usually get a bit jittery, but I like locked in when it's quite well. When you a bigger crowd, it makes you laugh. It's a bit more like reinforced, yeah. It feels a bit more validated when you've got more people like supporting you. If you're just playing on one man this dog, you kind of think that the man and the dog Hate. A lot of punch there. <laughs> With going to so many gigs, you can see how far you have come down the line from, from when you first started. And to be honest, it's, it's a pleasure to turn up and, and watch it. It's really good. I, I wouldn't have it any other way. Unless there was a situation when um, they didn't want us to come anymore. Like, oh, you're too old, Dad. You can't come. We want like a younger audience. Um, I'll just sort of sneak in at the back, maybe. I don't know. What's lovely about Clipper is you have a sort of dedication to your music and a style which you know sort of transcends generations. So I think if you were if you were thinking, oh no, our music is only for young people or a certain type of of um, gig or certain type of venue, then you're you're kind of missing the point of it being something that people can access at any level and any age because they just love to hear your music. Have you seen them live? No, we love them, I follow them everywhere. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that new song, Poor Boys. That's my favourite. Really coming of age tale. I call it Explode. I say, like, Explode! <laughs> oh, whatever you want. <laughs> Heart more with blues rock. Any 61. Sweet, cheers, pal. Ooh, nice one. They're an original band. They play original music. That's what I really look forward to, the next original song. Oh, just the, the tunes that are on, every one's an earworm. What's an earworm, Baz? An earworm. Because oh, once you hear a tune, it's stuck in your ear, you cannot get shot of it, you know? It's like parasitic in the nicest possible way. I'm well proud of it and uh, well proud of him, and he's a good bass player, and I can see it. And on all, he's a better bass player than me. And I hope, well, I don't suppose, I don't suppose he'll make money at it, but he'll get a lot of enjoyment out of it. It's really important to me personally to Taking the atmosphere of a gig from start to finish. You meet lots of people, you meet lots of nice people, and that's what that's what life's about. Friends and friendship. Expect a house 
life, expect a house fight. Though those times take me right to the wire. Expect a house fight, expect a house fight. Though I'm heavy and I'm cold like a stone, just seem to live alone, just seem to live alone. Days are long and they are small to the bone. You seem to live alone, just seem to live alone.